We can all look back on our childhood memories and find, in some form or fashion, a bouncing ball. Whether it be shooting hoops with friends or tossing a tennis ball against the wall while we were grounded, we've all played with these bouncing toys. While to most people, balls are rather unassuming objects, they actually serve as a rather interesting springboard into learning about many interesting physics phenomena. Acceleration, velocity, energy, you can learn it all when you start looking into the physics of bouncing balls. In any ball bounce, there are essentially seven stages that the action can be broken into. Let's break down the physics of bouncing balls. To begin, we'll look at the simplified seven stages of a ball bounce, ignoring any outside force other than gravity. The first stage is falling. Stage one is the beginning of every ball bounce where potential energy from the height of the ball is converted into kinetic energy through acceleration due to gravity. In a simplified case, the ball falls in line with the force of gravity, which always points directly downward. On Earth, this acceleration acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. This means, in essence, that for every second of falling, the ball's velocity will accelerate by 9.8 meters per second. The next stage is initial contact. The initial contact phase is just that, when the ball just barely makes contact with the ground's surface. It will continue to fall under the influence of gravitational acceleration, but now a normal force from the ground's surface opposes the force due to gravity will act on the ball. Next, we have deceleration, or negative acceleration. After initial impact, the ball rapidly decelerates, or rather accelerates, in the negative direction. The velocity of the ball still points downward as it deforms, but acceleration on the ball is beginning to point back upward as the forces from the reaction overcome gravity. This all means that the ball is pushing on the ground with a force that is greater than its own weight, so acceleration must point upward. Following the deceleration stage, the ball has now reached the maximum deformation stage. At this point, the velocity is zero and the acceleration vector points upward. This is the lowest point of the ball as well as its maximum deformed point. If we assume the ball to be totally elastic and ignore other energy losses like sound and heat, the ball would bounce back up to its original drop height after this point. Now we've entered the initial rebound phase. This stage begins the ball's journey back to where it began. Its velocity and acceleration vectors are pointing in the same direction, meaning upward movement. The ball is less deformed than the maximum deformation stage, and due to its elasticity, it's still pushing against the surface with a force greater than its own weight. This is what will cause the ball to bounce upward. Now we've reached the sixth stage, the zero contact rebound. At zero contact rebound, the ball is no longer deformed and is barely touching the surface, essentially only at at one point. Velocity is moving the ball upward, but at this point, acceleration switches to oppose the velocity vector. This is because there's no longer any force from the elasticity of the ball pushing on the surface, giving it an upward acceleration. Acceleration due to gravity, which pulls downward, will now be the only force acting on the ball in a perfect system. And the final stage, full rebound. At full rebound, the ball has left the surface and its velocity vector still points upwards, though shrinking steadily due to the acceleration or deceleration due to gravity. Following this step, the ball will reach a peak at a new step 1, where its velocity vector is zero and the only force acting on it is gravity. Now we can start to look into adding variables and special cases in bouncing ball physics. This previous case of the bouncing ball was simplified to remove any other forces like air resistance, imperfect elasticity, spin, friction, and force from an initial throw, among others. All this means that bouncing ball physics gets more complicated from here. When balls have any spin, as they usually do when thrown, and when the surface they hit isn't frictionless, the ball's spin reverses from before to after impact. This is actually due to the force of friction. Assuming two dimensions for theory's sake, you can observe the reaction here. As the ball impacts with a spin in one direction, the friction force F counteracts the ball's spin. 
or rather the friction force is always opposite the direction of the slip velocity between the spinning ball and the surface. Since the friction force is opposite of the ball's spin, it torques the ball in the other direction. It also causes the path of the ball's bounce to skew in the direction of the friction force. In simplified terms, when a ball spins in one direction, when it hits a wall, the friction between the ball and the wall overcomes the spin so much that it reverses its spin direction. This spin reversal doesn't happen if the ball and the wall's coefficient of friction isn't high enough. The coefficient of friction varies by material and surface and is essentially a number that indicates how grippy a surface or material is. In real, non-ideal scenarios, bouncing balls lose energy and eventually come to a stop. This is all due to the forces we ignored in the first example. When a ball hits a wall or surface, it makes a noise, which is a loss of energy from the ball's bounce. It will also generate some amount of heat, another loss of energy. Friction from the wall will also cause energy loss, as well as air resistance while the ball travels. In essence, the ball will never have as much potential or kinetic energy as it had from right after it was thrown, or right before it strikes the surface, depending upon how gravity acts on the throw. Bouncing balls are awesome examples of simple physics around us every day, and they also make for a great main character in a children's book. And I should know because I just released my new children's book, Beverly the Bouncing Ball, where you can follow the journey of Beverly and her best friend Rico the Rottweiler as they travel to the park. It's available in paperback and Kindle on Amazon today.